it's Mr Whitehead here for your maths lesson. You're going to need the practice activity from the end of the last session, plus a pencil and some paper. Press pause, collect those items, then come back and we'll make a start. Let's take a look at the practice activity. So you were giving, given three percentages of amounts to find. There are a number of ways that you could have approached each of those. I'm going to show you how I approached it, but yours, your approach may have been different and that's fine. We'll still reach the same solution. You were given the suggestion of using a ratio table or a double number line. I've gone for a ratio table. So the first one, 48% of 380, I calculated 50% and 1%. Then I used my 1% amount, doubled it to be equivalent to 2% and subtracted that from 190, which gave me 48% of 380 is 182.4. Was this the approach you took or did you go for a different one? Again, if we've got the same solution, it doesn't matter. Next, I have this time found 10% and 1%. From 1%, I doubled to find 2%, combined that with 0 0.5 to find 12% of 5 is 0 0.6. The final one, I found 20%. I found 1% and I subtracted the 1% from 20% to give me 19% of 407,600. Again, for this one, was that the approach you took or was it a different one for you? Doesn't matter if the solutions are the same. Give me a thumbs up if you gave the challenge a go. Good. So let's take a look, shall we? This is an exciting challenge. We're taking information from a pie chart and transferring it into a bar chart. Pie chart shows what 60 year six children voted to do. So the whole is 60. And that 60 has been split into how many parts? Four. Each part representing an end of year treat and the proportion of the whole that voted for that treat. Let's start then. Um, Transferring cinema, 25% of the whole voted for the cinema, 25% of 60. Now, again, as with the previous questions, there are different options for finding that amount. 25% is a quarter, a quarter of 60 is 15. 30% have gone for the climbing option, 30%. Well, if I know 10%, divide by 10, 6, 30%, three lots of six, 18. Bowling, 10%. Well, I've just worked out 10% to help me find the total that voted for climbing, six. Adventure playground is 35%. So you could have options there of finding 10%, using that to find 30%, using 10% to find 5% and combining, etc. But otherwise, another option I now know three of the parts. I know three of the parts are the, the numbers 15, 18 and 6, totaling 39. If the whole is 60, the missing part is the difference between 39 and 60, 21. We could have calculated that as a percentage and we've got the skills for doing that. But also, let's be sensible. Let's be efficient where we can. In this session, we're going to use our skills of finding a percentage of any number to solve some problems. Here's our first problem. Let's read it together. I have made 300 minutes of calls so far this month. This is 60% of my monthly free call allowance. How many minutes of free calls do I get each month? Let me give you some questions to help unpick this problem and check we understand what it's asking us. Have I used all of my free call minutes yet? Have a look back at the problem. Is it a yes or a no? Give me a thumbs up if you think yes, a thumbs down if you, if you think no. If you're saying no, you've spotted something 
within that problem. Let's take a look. Have I used all of my minutes yet? This is 60% of my monthly free call allowance. I've used 60% of it. I haven't used it all yet. So have I used all of my free call minutes? No, thumbs down was correct. Next question. Have I used more than half of my minutes? Hmm. Have I used more than half? What do you notice? I have used 60% of my monthly free call allowance. 60% and half. 60% is more than half. So the answer is yes. Next question. Is my total monthly free call minutes more or less than 300? What do you think? Give me a wave if you think more. Give me a thumbs up if you think less. Let's take a look. I have made 300 minutes of calls. Is my total more or less than 300? Well, what do I know about the proportion of my calls used? 60%. So my total, well, of course, has to be more than 300. I've not used them all yet. I've used 300. There are more to use. So my total will be more than 300. In a moment, we're going to use a bar model to unpick this problem and start answering the actual question. How many minutes of free calls do I get each month? I want you to pause, though, and start to draw a bar model to represent the information in this problem and see if it starts revealing any maths to you. Press pause, start your bar model, then come back and we can have a look at one together. Let's take a look. So we know 60% of the total free call allowance is 300 minutes. What percentage do we not know? Good, we don't know 100% and we don't know 40%. So we need to find that missing 40% to help us find the total 100%. So looking at what we do know, 60%, 300. My attention's caught there, three hundreds. What if I divide that part into three? 300 is 300s as percentages. If 300 is 60%, I need to split my 60% into three parts too. 60% into three parts, 20% each, three twenties. And I like 20 because I know five twenties is equal to 100, 100%. And therefore, if each 20% is 100, I've now got 500s. Does this help me find the missing 40%? Of course, two twenties, two hundreds, two hundred. So what is the total monthly allowance? Well, now I can see it's made of the 300 I've used and the 200 I've not yet used. 500 minutes. Let's transfer that information into a double number line. So zero to 100 percent. I know 60 percent is 300 minutes. I don't, well we've worked it out, but at the moment we can't see the number of minutes that is 100%. So from our 60, we can work back. We've picked the number 20, it called out to me from the 300 divided by 3, but of course it makes sense to work back to 20%. We could work back to 10% as well, but for this problem we're working back to 20. We're dividing by 3. We're dividing the number of minutes by three. And from there, from knowing 20% is 100 minutes, we multiply by five to find the total number of minutes, 500 minutes. Let's summarize that information in a ratio table. 100% is what we're trying to find using what we know. 60% is 300. Let's reduce that to 20% by dividing by 3 and from there multiply by 5 to find 100%, 500 minutes. Compare that ratio table to the bar model and to the double number line. Look at the connections. 
Look at where 100% is in the bar model. Where is it on the double number line? Where can you see on both of the other models the dividing by 3 and the multiplying by 5? The ratio table is the end point to try to reach. The bar models and double number lines help you get there. But in the end, you might just be working with ratio tables when you're solving problems like this. Here's a second problem for you. Let's have a read. 30% of the seats at a cricket match are taken. So far, there are 750 people present. How many people will there be when all of the seats are filled? So that's, that's the question you're being asked, but let's break it down and check we understand the problem. Are all of the seats filled yet? What do you think? No? And what's telling you no? Only 30% have been taken so far. So what percentage are free? 70%. Are more than half of the seats filled? What do you think? No. What percentage are filled? 30%. What percentage is, is half? 50%. So no, not yet half, less than half filled. And in total, are there more or less than 750 seats in total? What do you think? More? So far there are 750 people present. 30% is 750. So in total, 100%, the number is going to be much larger than 750. Maybe start estimating. 30%, that's almost a third. So if 750 is approximately one third of the total, we're looking at a number that's more than three times the size of 750, just a little bit more, but approximately three lots of 750. I'm now going to show you a bar model that's already been drawn, and I'd like you to unpick it and spot the maths. Here we go. Have a look. What can you see? What answers are you given? What can you see here that you already knew? And what can you see that the bar model has revealed? Press pause and spend some time looking at the bar model and making connections back to the problem. Press pause now. You ready to carry on looking? So can you see what we know? 30% of the seats are taken. 750 people are there. We know that. We don't know the total number of people that will be there when all seats are taken. So how has the bar model been used to help us find that? What's, ha what, what's been um, done? How has the bar model been changed to take us towards that final answer? Look at the 30%, 750. Split into three parts. Each part worth 250 people, each part 10%. Why was that chosen, do you think? Why has 30% been split into three parts? 10%, that's a nice number to work with when we're working with percentages. If we know 10%, we can find any multiple of 10% really easily. 100% is 10 10%. You can see the logic there. So from 10% of 250, we have a couple of options for then finding the total. Multiply by 10 or multiply by 7. Why might we multiply by 7? 70%. If I know 70% and I already know 30%, I can then combine. So two different options there for reaching that total of 100%. Let's transfer that information now from the problem onto a double number line. I've started it, but it's not finished. So press pause, draw the double number line yourself, then come back and compare. Press pause now. Are you ready to take a look? So why have I represented 30% on this line already? It's the known percentage part. We know it's worth 750. What are we trying to find out? The whole. 100% what that's worth. 
from our 30%, we're able to work backwards to move forwards. From 30%, dividing by 3 will give us 10%, 250. Why is 10% a nice percentage to work with when we're looking at percentages? Because 10 tens is 100, 10 10% is 100%. So we can multiply by 10 to find the whole. 250 multiplied by 10, 2,500. Let's transfer that again into a ratio table. This should be quick. So quick pause and fill in those missing spaces, then come back. Press pause. Ready? So the missing values, 2,500, 250. We've divided by 3 and multiplied by 10. The ratio table, as said before, is the end point. We want to reach a place where we can use a ratio table efficiently to support our problem solving. But the bar model and double number line are a stepping stone. They're helping us to understand how and why the ratio table works. If we can draw those connections, if we can see in the bar model those parts in the ratio table, and likewise with the double number line, then it's suggesting we've got that understanding of how the ratio table works. If you can't see the connections yet, continue to use bar models and double number lines to support your understanding of problems like this, and the ratio table will come in time. Practice activity. Please have a go at this between now and the next session. Have it ready for your teacher to review with you. Um, uh, number one, it's a similar problem to ones we've worked on in this session. Number two and three are standalone ratio tables. If you're ready for a challenge, and I'll be really interested to see how you do with this. I'm setting a rule of you must use 40% as your known percentage part. And do tell in your problem, do tell the people having a go at your problem what the, the, the value that 40% is representing, and they will need to find 100%. So I'm looking for you to create a similar problem to the ones we've worked on based around 40%. I've really enjoyed this percentages lesson, and I hope you have as well. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for your participation. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Press pause to take a copy of the activity before you go. Bye.